Christine Nixon calls the media together for a six o'clock announcement. We'll cross in a moment. Australians left stranded as volcanic ash in Europe grounds flights around the world. The Lions admit they suspected Favola had a gambling problem. And Susan Boyle cancels her trip to Australia. This is Nine News with Peter Hitchener. Good evening. Christine Nixon is about to face the media to reveal more about what she did on Black Saturday and declare she's not leaving her job as Chief of Victoria's Bushfire Reconstruction Authority. Jacqueline and Freegard joins me now. Jackie, what's she likely to say? Pete, we should be hearing from Miss Nixon any moment now, but what we can tell you is she will, for the very first time, detail her exact movements on Black Saturday. She has just returned from visiting her parents in Sydney. We understand she sought their advice up there, but what we can reveal tonight is that Christine Nixon spent the morning of Black Saturday at the hairdresser for up to two hours. It's understood she wants to face these rumours head on after increasing speculation. She has just informed the Premier of these developments. He did not ask for her resignation nor did she offer it. She's apparently going to leave her fate now in the hands of the Royal Commission and its final report. Peter. Thanks, Jackie, and we'll cross to that media conference as soon as possible. In the meantime, the plans of hundreds of thousands of passengers, air travellers, remain uh, around the world remain in disarray tonight as ash from an Icelandic volcano continues to cause problems that could stretch on for months. Large parts of European airspace remain no-go zones, with authorities declaring it's still too dangerous to fly. Brett McLeod joins me now, and Brett, even travellers in Melbourne have been affected. That's right, Peter. This has been called the worst global airline crisis since September 11. And like that infamous date, there's great uncertainty about just how this will end. It has affected flights from Moscow to Melbourne. Shortly, we're going to hear from local airline passengers who are disappointed today. But first, let's have a look at the force of nature that led to this crisis. A Fiat Leo Kutala roared into life on Wednesday, hurling a plume of ash 11 kilometres into the atmosphere. And now returning to our top story, let's cross live to Christine Nixon's press conference in the city. OK, you're right. OK, thank you. Um, thank you all for coming. As you know, there's been much um, speculation over the last two weeks about my activities on um, February the 7th. I wanted to uh, take this opportunity to provide some details about what I actually did on that day and hopefully so that approaches that have been made to my family and uh, particularly my elderly parents might stop. I took this job on and I knew the responsibility that it entailed. I'm also responsible for my decisions and all my actions. What I did on that day as Chief Commissioner will be judged ultimately by the Royal Commission. They are the ones who will hear all the evidence and make a decision when they report about whether or not my behaviours on the day were appropriate. My primary concern at the moment is all of the commentary that is having an effect on the bushfire communities. They are the people who I have come to know and work with and I have an enormous amount of respect for. Christine Nixon speaking in the city. Brisbane coach Michael Voss has revealed the Lions were suspicious of Brendan Favola's gambling habits even before drafting him. Favola has admitted to an addiction amid reports he's accumulated around $200,000 in debts. Tony Jones with the latest. A convicted killer who escaped from a minimum security prison in Western Victoria has been recaptured in Adelaide. David John Scott was arrested after being spotted by a local resident. Brendan Roberts has more. More than 1,300 patients at a Melbourne abortion clinic have contacted a state hotline fearing they may have contracted hepatitis C after it was revealed a doctor infected 12 women with the disease. Dr James Latham is alleged to have infected the women at the Croydon Day Surgery between June 2008 and December 2009. Health Minister Daniel Andrews says tests are being carried out to determine whether any more patients have contracted the disease. My officials are working very, very hard to make sure that we are contacting those people, dealing with their risks. Lady Sonia McMahon has been remembered at a private memorial service in Sydney. It was held at St Mark's Anglican Church in Darling Point, where she married former Prime Minister Sir William McMahon in 1965. Her actor son Julian and daughters Melinda and Deborah led the tributes to the 77-year-old who died from cancer two weeks ago. The invitation-only event brought together high-profile mourners from the worlds of politics, racing and the charities Lady McMahon supported. Twins born almost four months premature and on the brink of death several times 
have made a remarkable recovery. Millie Rose and Lachlan Aldous have joined their parents to thank staff at the Royal Children's at the Royal Women's Hospital. Vicky Jardim was there. When we return, President Obama over the moon and a brave trooper's gift to the nation. Finance and after a promising few days, the share market retreated to close the week about where it started. Resources and energy stocks were down, financials were generally lower, although the Commonwealth bucked the trend. The All Ordinaries Index eased 16 points, our dollars bringing 93 US cents and is up a little in Europe. Sports next with Tony Jones and we get to have some actual footy on the weekend, Tony. Well, that'd be a change, wouldn't it, Pete? Yes, because the Magpies have tried to close the book on their horror week. The Hawks coach, meanwhile, a little confused. And Typhoon Tracy to whip up another storm in Sydney. Good evening. No need to wait for the clouds to clear today. Just blue skies and a top of 26 late this afternoon. The overnight low was 13. Most maximums around the state were in the mid-20s. Water consumption is down, so are the dams. That high pressure system bringing our stunning autumn weather will be centred in the Tasman tomorrow. We'll have northerlies well into next week. A low should be close to the bite on Sunday, but is very weak and is likely to just clip the western half of Victoria. An upper, upper trough should have some impact, but there won't be a significant wind change or much rainfall until at least Thursday. Interstate, Sydney could get a shower and Brisbane as well. Sunshine and 26 in Perth. Here in Victoria, a fine day except for some fog in the southeast. For Melbourne tonight, clear skies, light winds and a low of 14. Just early morning fog in the southeast. And excellent conditions tomorrow, particularly for a Saturday. Fine and sunny up to 27. On the bays this weekend, a north to north easterly up to 10 knots. Great beach and surf weather along the coast around the mid-20s on the Mornington Peninsula. The outlook is anything but average. Just the chance of an evening shower on Sunday, 26. A cloudy top of 27 for Monday. We could get isolated showers from midday on Tuesday, but still warm, 26. Also the chance of showers on Wednesday, 24. Partly cloudy Thursday, 23. And perhaps a shower or two Friday, 25. Pete, would you live anywhere else? Never. <laughs> Thanks, Brody. And uh, just before we leave you, we'll recap our top story tonight. Christine Nixon has revealed at a media conference less than half an hour ago that she visited her hairdresser on the morning of Black Saturday and later met her biographer. Despite that, she intends staying on as chief of the Bushfire Reconstruction Authority and says she won't resign. In Melbourne, that's what's news this Friday from all of us. Have a great weekend and good night.